Okay, we're ready to wrap the bottom of this rudder around. What I've done is I've pre-glued this little edge here so that that'll just fit right around that. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and glue that into place. along there and there and behind that so give us our starting point kind of tied up through there right around that what I'm doing is I'm holding this up just a little bit off the back edge I don't want that to lap over on my other fabric so I'm going to let that set up for just a little bit put a piece in wanting to lay down right in there so I'm just going to go ahead and press that around with my scissors because my big fat finger won't fit up in there Set on up a little bit. Okay, we're glued right up around through here. Now we're just going to pull a little tension. We we'll just want to just glue that edge to there. We don't want to. We don't want to glue all the way over this edge yet. Just have to have a little patience through here and let that kind of tack up. Right on down the line. A little tension on this down to here. Just glue it right up to where that wrinkle starts, and we'll pull the rest of that out with a shoe iron. Just glue right along that edge down to there. Hang on to that for a moment and let that tack up. Then we'll get back, take our shoe iron and work right on around the edge, and then we'll finish this edge right on out. That wants to stay up a little bit around that edge, and you just go ahead and heat that just a little bit, and make that stick good. Not too much heat, our iron just set at 250 degrees. Sure that stays put in there. Should have that. Now our next mission is to get this edge to wrap right around. You can see we got quite a bit of excess fabric in here, so we're just going to have to start shrinking this out just a little bit. We've got just a low temperature on our iron, 250 degrees or so. Go ahead and start doing this, and we may have to pick our temperature up a little bit as we go. So just start. I'm just pulling this up and just starting to shrink that around that radius right there. A little bit back this way.
We'll start shrinking this from up here on the top side. Trying to get the rest of that out of there. Okay, once we get to where we, or as far as we can get, we'll go ahead and turn our iron up to about 300 degrees, a little more temperature on it. We're going to try to get the rest of these wrinkles out of here before we can finish moving around the edge. So we can pull this back here and just start shrinking that right around that curve. Just like that. Continue to get these wrinkles out of here. Just lightly touching it just to get it to shrink out the shrink out the wrinkles. Pull it away from the tube a little bit if you need to. Of course the rest of the factory is working right along so the noise is in the background just more airplane parts being put together. And we'll just keep working that right around like that. Shrinking a little out as we go. Got all of our wrinkles gone now. We're nice and clean through here. At that stage, we're going to turn our iron up just a little bit more. And we'll just keep shrinking that around. This way, that'll lay in there nice and around that curve. Like that. Then we'll get our pencil. And uh, I normally just. Uh, I just hold my pencil out from my finger just a little ways and I'll just, just drag a line around that. We just need that to flap over about a quarter of an inch from the edge. So we're just going to get us a line right up through here. A nice straight line just like that. All the way up to the front, curving back into the tip. You can use a straight edge there if you like, but you can see that the rudder already has a little bit of a bow in it, so it's really hard to get a straight line with, a, with an actual piece of angle, but you can draw the line like that if you like. Or you can take your pencil and lay it in along the edge and use this finger as a drag mark or, or a, a rip fence, if you, if you will, right along that edge, and then you can can drag that line down like that. Does the same thing. I use my finger just to hold that in to draw that line. And I just give just a little bit of space between my finger and the pencil, and push it in the way I like it, and just hold that tension. All right, then we'll take our glue, and we're just gonna pre-glue that little edge right across through there, all the way up to the front. Again, so we don't get any frays. Go ahead and glue that right around through there. And then just go ahead and lay that fabric back like that so that it doesn't stick over the edge quite yet because we want to we want to be able to cut that edge after that dries and get a nice clean line. While we're waiting on that to dry, we'll just go ahead and turn the rudder around. And you can see I just left that flapped open back there. Now we've got all of this to deal with. Now we've got our iron turned up to just a little above 300 degrees. And we'll just start stretching this fabric back. And just stretching it around the edges. Working with the weave of the fabric, I'm able to stretch a bunch of it out of it like that. Just stretch it on around there. And you can see the way that stretches out and the, the weave is a bias all the way around through there so it'll it'll work its way around and we just work our way all the way to this edge. Then we get our iron. We'll go ahead and start heating that up to continue to shrink that. 
right around through there. A little tension on it. And we're just going to continue working toward the tip. We're only looking for about a three-eighths to a half-inch lap right here. That lap usually ends up being however much fabric we can get smoothed as we come around through here. So we'll just keep shrinking that fabric. Keep shrinking it back. And if it just folds over back there a little ways, that's just fine too. We're not gonna we're not gonna keep it that long. We'll just keep cleaning our fabric up around through there. We'll keep stretching as we shrink. Grabbing it in the right spots as we go. You can see what's pulling tension in the right spots. Just keep doing that. Just keep shrinking our fabric around. We'll try and work all the way around this tip. Just like that. that out of it. Just iron right on back across it. Put anything at all. Our main goal is to get about three-eighths to a half inch lap over the top of that rudder. So whatever it takes to get there we'll do it. You can see we're starting to get close now. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my iron up to about 350 degrees. While I wait going to come up, I'm just going to go around and just touch up some of these edges. It's still showing a little bit of wrinkle in there. We're just waiting for our iron to come up to temperature so we can shrink this the rest of the way around. And I've, I already know where my iron goes to to be at the right temperature. I've preset everything, but you know you can check it with your heat gun. Every once in a while, make sure you're in the right spot. So now that we've got our iron turned all the way up to 350, we're going to go ahead and take the final shrink out of this. We're just going to go ahead and work it around like that, and I'll keep grabbing the fabric in a new spot as I come around. Try and get all that I can get out of it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can see if we can get a good half inch around through there. Take that section out a little bit more. Okay, then we're going to get our pencil. We're going to come in about a half inch. Again, we can take either our small ruler or whatever we happen to have handy to use as a guide fence. And we can just roll right around through there with about a three-eighths to a half inch lap. I'm able to get a good, um, a good half inch lap out of it. See, I've drawn my line around through there. I'm going to come back through and just clean that up a little bit the way I would normally do it, which is just with my finger. Go back with our glue. We'll seal that little edge around through there. We'll also keep that from stretching back out on you if you just go ahead and do the whole thing. And then we're going to want to pull that up so that that doesn't actually stick to the surface. Just like that. Let that dry.
We really don't want that to stick in quite yet. We just want to seal that edge. So I'm just holding it up here and there just to keep that from sticking down into place because we're going to run our run our glue brush back around that inside edge and then back around the top edge. It looks like everything's laying there nice and neatly. We'll start to back up. We'll go ahead and switch back to our other side, let that dry. Now this edge is dried for us. So we'll go ahead and get our scissors. We're going to start that out with a razor blade. Being careful not to cut through our fabric on the other side. We're just going to start this little cut around this edge right here. Around the top of that rivet. Just like that. We're going to start the cut. Then we'll get our scissors in there. We'll go ahead and start our cut down through there, right on our pencil mark, as neat as we can. And we'll just continue that right on down to the other end. Cutting right on our pencil mark. Right on the pencil mark, right around the edge. And run around this turn and flip it off for a neat finish. Then we can come back through with our poly tack and we'll just run glue right around that edge right there, cut just a little ways. Some glue on that line. We'll go ahead and start working that over. Start laying that over. Again, you're being careful not to not to start spraying those edges. Once you get that down there, clean your glue brush off pretty dry. And we're just gonna lightly lay a pretty good bead of glue right around that edge, right off of that back edge. And just let that soak in. We don't want to rub that too much and we'll start pulling up spray so we're, we're lapped over the edge real nice. Then we'll come right on back and uh, usually once you have that going you can pretty much just take the whole thing out all the way up through there. Back to the brush and just kind of lay that over. A little bit of glue on top of it. Then we'll just lightly rub that with our finger just enough just to lay it over and get it to stick into the glue bed. Like that. You can see the way when I pulled it this way it started to wrinkle up a little bit. I'll just pull that wrinkle right back out of it that way. I'll switch fingers as I'm going to keep my fingers kind of dry. Okay, we got that laying down. We'll do the same thing to this edge. We'll clean our glue brush off a little bit. We'll just lay a fairly generous glue line, about an eighth inch overlap onto the other fabric to make sure that we have a good glue joint. All right, that's down real nice. That's got that finished off and what we'll do is once that sets up, we'll come back and we'll re-iron this to 350 degrees to get this tight. And then we'll use brush coat, uh, poly brush, to join those two layers of fabric together that are on the bottom. That'll be done the same on the, on the ends of your uh, ailerons, your flaps, your uh, elevators. And, and that way those are glued together and that is one solid glue seam all the way to the tip where it's glued across the bottom with the poly brush. It's a, it's a nice lap. It'll never come loose. Alright, so we got that laid down. Top's dry by now. We'll just flip this back over and get back on this. Now we can hold that up just a little bit. 
we can come back in and just heat it up just a little bit again to make sure that we're got a nice line around through there. I'm just taking any place that looks like it may have a little bit of a pucker. I'm not sticking it to the fabric. I'm, I'm actually holding it up off the fabric with my thumb underneath, just trying to get it shaped well. All right, then we can get our scissors. We can start our clean edge right there. Run that right up through there. And once we get up far enough we can get a hold of it, we can just go ahead and drag our scissors right around that nice neat pencil mark that we made. Using that for our finished seam. Right around to the front. We'll take it right off that edge right there. I'm gonna just a little spot right there. I'm just gonna trim that off to make that a nice neat transition back to the scene that we had made earlier. Okay, so now we're ready to get our glue. We'll just roll this back just a little bit, and we'll just run our brush right up underneath there, all the way around that seam. All the way back. Then we'll run a little layer across the top of it, just like this. And where we've ironed that around there, it's going to naturally want to stay in place. We've got it just like that. We'll run a line right around the top and let that start seating in. Make sure we catch any runs we've got before they get around to the other side of our fabric. And then we're just going to make sure that everything got stuck down real nice and neat through here. Just like that. And that looks to be a really nice lap on the top of that rudder. We've got that all the way glued all the way around this edge, all the way to about a half inch lap around the top. You can see everything soaked in real nice because it's all it's all dark. If you got white spots, that means it didn't get glued good, like that little spot right there. I'm actually able just to work that little air bubble right out of there, and I know I've got a good lap. Okay, that's got our rudder fairly well complete. Now the next thing we're going to do. So I'm going to make a couple of patches. To go right around our rudder horn right here. So it'll be done about the same way we did the fuselage. We'll get our get our inspection ring and our pencil. We'll decide how we want that to look. Just about like that. And then what we can do is we can have actually draw the edges of this rudder horn right there. That way we can get exactly the same thing on the other side. It's not that critical. It's just a reinforcing patch. So we're going to come right around through there like that. So if you know where we're going with this, then I'm just going to take a little poly tack and I'm just going to pre-glue that right up to that edge. Just like that around the front. Let that dry, flip that over, do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll go ahead and make our patches up and get that sealed up. Okay, we've got a little piece of scrap fabric here left over from the edge of our rudder. We just need a couple of patches to do a reinforcement on the rudder. So I'm just going to draw two circles right here with my reinforcing ring for an inspection cover. Again, you can use whatever you've got that's got the right size round. And we'll 
take our scissors and we'll just do a rough cut just to cut those out so they're easier to work with. Cut those two little guys out. Working around them with our pinking shears. You can see I can make a cut around that far, and then I'm just indexing my picking shears back with the cut that I left off on, just so that they continue a nice pink edge around through there. What you accomplish by doing a pink edge on these, for one thing, it stops it from fraying. Another thing is you get more blue area along the edge because it has to work its way around all those edges so it actually stays down a lot a lot firmer when the edges are pinked and it's a standard look for fabric work so don't have to worry about it being looking odd in the fabric world it's just standard to have pink edges on all of your patches all of your tapes, all the finished areas will be pink like that. All right, those are two patches for our runner. Okay, then we've already got this, uh, got a bed coat down. Now we're just going to find out where we'd like for that to lay. We're just going to mark the bottom edge of that and a line right up through there. We'll just go ahead and pre glue that just a little bit to keep it from fraying. So I'm just going to take this piece where I just marked it and put a little drop of glue right there, just a line straight out the front. Just like that. We'll let that set up and I'll just cut back to that mark and I know that's where I want that to live. And then while we're waiting for that to dry, we can get roughly a distance where we'd like for that to end, which is about right there. About right in there. And we'll do a little blue line straight across that at about the about a 90 degree angle from the mark that we brought across the front. We we'll kind of double check ourselves and see if that's the distance we're looking for. And it is, we just want it to wrap right around to the front edge right there. So we're just kind of letting this dry out a little bit. And we can take our regular scissors. We'll just cut straight across the front of that glue mark that we made. Just like that. And we'll Trim that right back to our cross mark that we made. And we're going to do just a little sixteenth of an inch or so. Cut both directions on that so it'll wrap up along the edges. And we should be able to lay this in there and see that those will come just about to the center of the tube on the front. Line it up on the back. It all looks good. So now we can actually best thing to do from there is just go ahead and get your other patch while we've got it rather than having to lay everything out. And we can get our pencil. We'll just go right down through that little cut right there. We can draw that line. Then we can draw a line right across through here. A little cross mark. And we can see that we've Already got our patch ready for the other side, so we can just go ahead and pre-glue that while we're thinking about it. A nice little glue line right across through there. And right up through there. Ending at your mark. 
Just lay them up on just lay that up on something so it doesn't stick to the table and we'll let that dry out. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and come back with our poly tack. We'll put a little glue along this edge right here. We'll glue along that edge. We'll just go ahead and glue that right on out for our patch right on around the leading edge just like that, get nice and wet and then we can just lay our patch we made right up to that point kind of straighten them out around through there just like that get our glue down in there, get everything down to where we like it That. Then we'll just go ahead and glue that right on into place. We'll just come right on around the outside edge of that reinforcing patch. Just overlap the patch about an eighth of an inch around the around the edges. Just so that we get plenty of glue along the edge of the tape to keep it keep it laying down. Pull all that right back in there. Work our way right over the leading edge here. Press that in nice and tight right there. Press that in. Press it in along the bottom edge. Smooth your glue out. Just like that. Go around and make sure I knock any edges off of that. And that's got your reinforcement patch. When that dries, that'll be extremely tough right there. That, that'll, that'll allow you to iron the, iron the whole thing to uh, you know, a little over 300 degrees like we did on our vertical stabilizer. Um, it's likely that you can take the rudder all the way to 350, um, but you'll have to judge that as you go to what you're, you know, you'll be looking at your trailing edges to make sure they're not dimpling in too far. They'll come in a little bit anyway. It'll naturally get a little curve along the back edge. But uh, we don't want that to pull away from this. So I'm going to put that same patch on the other side over here. And then I'm going to iron this whole thing to 300 degrees, 310. Uh, you can see you got a little bit of fabric sticking up right in the underneath here. We can come back with our shoe iron and stick all that down after this dries. And uh, then this is um, ready for brush coat after it's ironed up to uh, a little over 300 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and do the patch on the other side, finish this out, and uh, we'll get ready for brush coat on our vertical stabilizer and our rudder. Okay, now before we go too much further, we want to come back through and burn the holes through where our hinges are going to uh, rivet so that we don't lose them. And uh, you can see them through the fabric. And I just take a soldering iron at a low temperature and I just locate the holes, just my reference holes for the, where my hinges rivet. I'm just going to burn those right through. like that. That way we know where they live and we'll be able to find them through the whole rest of the process. We've already glued both of our patches on. Reinforcing patches are done around through here. Um, now I'm ready to go ahead and uh, heat my iron up to 300 degrees and I'm going to go ahead and iron the rest of this and we'll be ready for brush cut. Okay, we've let all our glue set up. We've uh, burned the holes for our rudder hinges. We're ready to go ahead and iron this to 350 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and take you through a bit of it just because he's got some uh, interesting little points on them. We're going to start at the midpoint of our rudder, about the center bag. And we'll just let that iron just run right up on the edge of that rib just a little bit. I'm just going to iron right through to the bottom, all the way down to the trailing edge. Right off the front, 
We got to be careful not to not to roll our iron around the front, or we'll we'll uh, shrink that seam. We don't want to do that. So then, when we get to the back edge, we'll iron right up to the back edge there, and then we'll just bring our iron right around the edge, just like that, real nice and light, to make that contour work. Just want to end up with a nice uniform finish there. A little bit around the leading edge. And then we'll jump down to our next bay. Running right up onto the ribs just a little bit. Right back to the trailing edge. And just pick that up. Run right around that edge like that. Work our way right up to the next one. heating all this where everything just pulls around real nice and tight around all these edges. Pick it up, go ahead and heat around that edge right there. We're just going to do that all the way out all these bays. We're going to be careful not to touch the edges of our tapes, any of our seams um, up on the top. Then we can take a pencil while we're going. Just so we know where we started, we'll just put a little X right there. And we know we've already ironed that to 300 degrees and we've ironed that to 300 degrees. So I'm just going to do that over the whole thing. We'll go ahead and turn around this end right here. We know that on our trailing edge we've made a lap up the front and we've never come back through and heated that to 300 degrees. So we'll just kind of look as we go. Look as we go. We'll just iron that right on up the temperature. And once we get that to where we like it, we can take our shoe iron, also set to 350 degrees. And we can come around some of these little points that we can't get our big iron into. We need to iron this right around through there. Get all of this down neatly around that edge. Right across through there. Go ahead and stick all that down nice and neat around that tiller arm. Same up in here around that edge. Get everything stuck down neatly. Then we'll go ahead and come right around this edge and make sure that all this come in nice and neat around through there. And then we can just run back up that edge one more time just to make sure we get all that iron to where it goes. while we have our shoe iron in our hand. We've got a few wrinkles around this edge where we pulled that seam earlier. We want to make sure that the little folded part of that lays over nice. Just really just dig it right in there. And come right around the bottom edge of that. Around the bottom edge of that. Get that down nice and neat. You can see that that's just worked out real nice through there. While we got our shoe iron in our hand, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and check, make sure that the, where these rivets come down the front, there's always a few wrinkles down in there. So we'll just go ahead and iron along the edges of those, up along that edge. Just ironing all this to 350 degrees. Make sure that everything looks neat. And around those rivets. Which it did. Looks awesome. Just like that. And again, while we got our shoe iron still in our hand, we've got where we've run these patches around, they have just a little fold up on the inside edge. So it's good just to come in right now and just go ahead and just stick those right down. Get those right down in there. Any little wrinkles along that front edge right there, get those. Do that on both sides. Get the seam. Make sure everything laid down nice and neat. It did. Then we've got a little seam right across the front with the two left over each other. We'll just go ahead and touch those up a little bit too. 
Okay. So now we have our, we still have our X's. Well, we know we've already ironed the 350, and we'll just head right on. particular attention right in here because we do not want to touch our reinforcing patch. So we'll work right around that edge. Get all of that there. And we know we've already come one bay past that X so we can just go ahead and hit this section here. Iron that in. Catch this final one. So on this one, we're paying particular attention not to touch our seam where we seamed around that edge. And it did ever come in nice. And we'll get right up here on our tip, very top, line right around through there. Line right around the edge of our seam. Like that. Knock that one out through there. And we're ready to iron our other side. Now the other side we can iron a little different than the other one because it doesn't have the bumps in the back. So we can just start out right on that trailing edge working around this way. And we can just go ahead and run our iron all the way across that trailing edge. All the way around the perimeter of the rudder. All the way up around the top. And it's back through here. Right around that front edge. And you can actually see your iron mark where it shrunk it a little further than the rest of it. So we'll just start about in our center bag. And we'll just put an iron right back to the front, taking our time, work right around these, get that down nice and neat around the front edge of them, and then we'll just start working from side to side, just like that, just like that, go back to this one, iron it right up to there. Get our pencil and we'll just put a little mark where we've already ironed and we'll just keep working our way on around. Down the edge. Right to the bottom. around our patch to make sure we don't touch that. And right back up to the top. And we've already done the top of it all the way around so all we got to do is just finish that out right through there. And we'll finish out right through here. Right here, where I got just a little bit of a gray, I'm just going to take my shoe iron, put it into there. And then there's a little spot right in between the tiller arm and that last rib that there's a little piece of fabric sticking out. I'll show you a trick for getting that. I'm going to take my razor blade. I've got my shoe iron at 350 degrees, so I'm just going to heat the tip of that razor blade. 
you can actually see it starting to turn a little blue. Razor blade takes heat real well. So we're going to heat that up to 350. Take just about a minute. Then we'll take our razor blade and just lay it right in there. And we'll lay that seam over where we can't get our finger or our shoe iron down in there. That, that razor blade will absolutely do the trick. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, this rudder's done. Ready for brush coat. Okay, next we're going to start covering our horizontal stabilizers and our elevators. I normally lay my table out and get my fabric cut for all four of these and just lay them out at the same time. I've already pre-glued the tubes for a bed coat. Now, I'm not going to show you all of the techniques on these because they're pretty much the same as the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. So we're just going just gonna to kind of stop in from time to time and I'll show you some of the little tricky parts. Uh, one thing is where I start on the vertical stabilizers, I mean on the horizontal stabilizer, I'm sorry, is I, I pre-glue this because we're going to have to cut around this little notch for your forward attach point on your horizontal stabilizer. And uh, there's a little trick to finishing out this, uh, this tip right here where the elevator goes in. Other net, pretty much the same stuff. Okay, we've got our horizontal stabilizer. I've just tacked the edge around with the um, with the MEK rag, and I'm going to come back and uh, I'm going to brush a little bit of uh, poly tack into that to make sure that stays solid. I was going to show you how to get these little edges right here on this corner. Just want to go ahead and just glue that right down to that edge, just right around through there, and just draw a straight line out from that edge with your brush. A straight line out with your brush right there. We're just going to stick all this down. Make sure that stays put. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to cut a straight line all the way to all the way to the inside point right here. Just leave about a quarter inch right in here. So we're just going to cut a straight line right down through here and a straight line right down through there. Out here on the tips, we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna, we're gonna just glue a straight line. Just gonna glue a straight line right down through here. And we're just gonna cut this right up through here so that when we wrap around the inside, we'll have fabric left over to cover our tip with. So we're just gonna hold that down for just a second right there. Right. And this front edge up here, we're just going to glue it flat out across and then we'll, we'll come around and cut that back up to there and wrap that edge. We'll leave about an eighth inch around that outside edge so we can iron it over just like we did on the vertical stabilizer.
Okay, we've got all of our parts covered, and now it's time to do our brush coating. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I, I've got a little rack that I used that I had uh, Dennis over in the welding shop weld up for me a long, long time ago, and it uh, it really assists me in uh, in getting this brush coated. But uh, you know, you can you can brush coat these just laying flat on a sawhorse is fine. This works pretty good. First thing we're going to do is find us a good fresh tack cloth. We're just going to go through and tack all these parts off. Make sure we didn't any dust settling in the shop since we covered it. It's off of our surface before we, before we brush coat. Everything's already been ironed to 350. I've been around all the edges and cleaned everything up. Make sure all my seams are down nice and tight and everything looks neat. Trimmed around the edges. I usually keep my MEK handy just in case I see something before I start brush coating. So if I see something that just didn't get caught, like that right there, my iron's also usually sitting there hot and ready to go. This part looks to be in perfect shape. Now we're all tacked down. I'm gonna I'm gonna start out by brush coating the bottom side or on the vertical stabilizer would be the side that has the seam on it or the one with our hinge marks on it. little thing you see that has a little wrinkle under anything right now is the time to catch it. Then we've mixed up our brush coat. Just like we mixed it for the fuselage. And I like to take these one panel at a time. So I would call this a panel from my rivet line over to here. And we also have to brush coat this leading edge, so I'm only going to brush coat about halfway across that leading edge on this side. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get my brush kind of dried out. And I'll just go ahead and run that line right down through there. And again, I'm using clear brush coat just because I don't like the red tint. But I can see it soaking through there well, so I know where I've been. And what I, what I like to do after I get that first part cut in, is I just come from the middle over, just like that. And then you can see that soaking through, running down the inside, and finishing out a nice clean seam right there. And after we brush that from side to side, we can just go ahead and dry our brush out. Start out on the side that we started our brush run from. So we can get some of the excess off of there. You've got to move along pretty quick with this. Because you do not want it to start setting up before you finish getting everything smoothed out the way you want it. I just pull that line right to the center of my rivet line. Just like that. Go back over and make sure you got all the bubbles out of it. Just like that. And I just go ahead and pick that up. And I just go ahead and take all the excess off the bottom of it, just like that. Rag then you clean your hands off. We'll rub down that edge. Now that's brush coated. Other than one little hair. And 
and it's a good time right now to look back and make sure you don't have any hairs in it. And it's a nice cool morning here so it's uh, not drying real fast. You've got plenty of time to work with it this morning. So we'll go ahead and start on this next section. And I'll just start right up here. Get that line running down along that leading edge. Right down to where we ended up. We want to make sure we don't get so much on that top that it runs over to the other side. And when we start our brush coat right here, we want to make sure that it doesn't run around the back side. that's all good. Make sure we don't have any runs anywhere. Uh, look for hairs. Anything that could cause us grief later. Then we can just come back through and smooth out any excess that runs over the edge. And I usually just take that all the way back through and do the whole thing one time. Make sure we don't have any runs. That piece looks perfect. We'll go ahead and start on this one. This one's got our lap around the bottom edge, so we'll start right out by just brush coating down that bottom edge. Then we'll go ahead and get a, a start line here. And we'll go ahead and just complete that right on out. Just make sure we're well saturated. Then we're ready to go ahead and smooth that back out. Kind of just lightly with the brush to get all the bubbles out of it. Just like that. And then we'll make sure we don't have anything running anywhere. Right up underneath the bottom. Clean that off. And that's got one side of our vertical stabilizer brush coated. And uh, we'll set that off to the side and let that dry. And then we'll flip it over and uh, do the back side. Okay, we've set our vertical stabilizer around the back side so that the one side can dry. Now we're ready to take our tack cloth. I'm going to come through and make sure our rudder's ready to go. And we'll just tack that off. I 
and I've already gone around the edges and I've cleaned this up and made sure everything is just the way I want it. I feel a little something right there. The Lumi K. Just like that looks good. Side right here where our seams at. See the little little fray right there. Just going to hit that with an iron. Make sure everything's just the way we want it before we brush coat it. Looks good. Then we're ready to brush coat. Now on this one, our seams on the front and our laps on this back edge. What I generally do when I'm doing like a rudder or an elevator is I'll call my panels probably every two of, of these ribs. So we'll just start out right here. I'll just run my brush right along the back edge, making sure to not put so much on there that it runs around the other side. So what I generally do is just go ahead and come on through and rub that down to make sure it didn't run over the other way. Then we'll just start right in the middle of the rib. We'll run right out to the end. And go ahead and put enough of that on there that it just runs right through the inside of the fabric. We want it to run all the way down and coat both sides. We'll just work our way right across both of these panels. And you can see that soaking through there real nice and turning the rib nice dark gray. It means you're getting good penetration. You want to make sure you get around the front edge of those. like that. We're coating all of our tape lines real well. bubbles out of this. Get all of our lines look nice and neat.
take off on our next panel, just running it right from rib to rib. And we're moving along pretty quick so we can uh, we can still come back and brush up this one edge here just a little bit as we go. Make sure we get good penetration. Under the bottom of all those. Make sure to keep it good and wet the whole time we're working. If it starts looking kind of dry, you're, you're running too slow. Because we want this to flow out real nice and flat, and to flow out it still has to be extremely wet after you get your last brush stroke done. Just like that. We'll check our back edge. Come underneath and get anything off the bottom. And you can feel that brush coat going underneath and it's soaking all into that seam and double, double securing everything. because your poly brush coat is also an adhesive. So everywhere that it touches, it's actually gluing the fabric to that surface. So where your ribs are at, you're actually double securing your fabric in all of its attach points. It's actually gluing itself to the ribs. See that running down the inside of the fabric there, flowing in real nice. Doing these up vertical like I'm doing them here gets a lot better flow on the inside of the fabric than it does brush coating them flat. Going back through right now, just a few bubbles still laying there. I want to get that as clean as possible. The fabric's looking real nice and clean, everything's coming out real nice. Just want to catch our excess. We'll come back and double check everything. Make sure nothing's running over because we still have the glue running down the inside that can pool down in these uh, points and then run around the inside edge. So it's usually a good idea to come back and double check from time to time, make sure all those are neat. And that right there, as soon as I finish this panel here, 
we'll have our brush coat on this side of the rudder completed. Just okay, like now we've switched our rudder over to the other side to dry. We've pulled our vertical stabilizer over here for the opposite side. This is going to be the same process that we're going to use to brush coat all of the tail feathers and ailerons and flaps will be done the same way. So the only other brush coat technique I'm going to try and teach you is um, is for the wings themselves, we'll, uh, we'll go through brush coating the wings. Now what I've done is I've just come across the bottom edge of that where we've already brush coated about halfway across and I'm just, I'm just making sure that's nice and clean down through there, not running off the back side anywhere. Go ahead and brush coat this little guy here. Making sure we get every all the weed filled real well with plenty of product so that it runs down the inside. And we'll just smooth that out, make sure we don't have any bubbles, no real big ropey lines. Just like that. Then we'll go around and we'll make sure we got nothing running around any of the edges. Just like that. Pull up, clean up our trailing edge. That's just come out real nice and we can just go right on up to the top part of our vertical. And I'm just going to run a line right along this front edge just about halfway across so I can you can actually see where your line's at from the other side. And then we'll get a good start point there so we don't pull product across the front, across the top. Take a chance on it running over to our other side. We'll just go ahead and smooth that right down just like that. And we'll just go ahead and start brushing this. And again, just like we did on the other side, we're just going to go right to the center of this rivet line on the tape. We're soaking that tape down real good so it gets its second coat also in this same burst coat run. And you can actually see that running down the inside. It's getting a real nice coat on it. We're putting a lot of product on it. And this is uh, just uh, poly brush mixed up just like the just like the poly fiber company says to mix it. Other than we have added some. 8600 retarder to slow it down some so it doesn't get ahead of us while we're trying to brush coat. We'll get some of the excess off right there. Just like that. Get quite a bit on there so I'm going to go ahead and take some off through here. And then we're ready just to smooth all this out real nice and neat. Go 
go back over to make sure we get all the bubbles. Now I've got this drying real nice and slow and it's real cool in here today, which is why the heater's kicking on and off on us because it is quite cold in December here. Outside. Looks like we've got that and I don't see any hairs in anything, so we'll just come up. Clean up our edge here, make sure we're not running over anywhere. Right up under here and clean up the bottom edge of that. A little hair right there that's pulled out. Then we'll do the same thing to this little section. We'll pull it over just far enough to See it flow into what we coated on the other side. Right down that leading edge like that. Let me smooth that right in. That right, looks beautiful. Just bring this right back over to that center line of that rivet line right there. Pull a little hair out. excess off of there and then we'll go ahead and just smooth this right on out. And you can see by the way we brush coated that we put a real nice coat over our tape line again. And I brush coat these just this one time. This, when this dries this is ready to go in the spray booth. Getting a nice neat line here, and then that'll just smooth right out. Right back over our leading edge. Come under the trailing edge. Just like that. Now we'll just let this set up for just a moment and then we'll switch it off to the other side and we'll do the other side of our rudder. Well we've got our vertical stabilizer set on the other side and drying. Uh, we've already let the one side of our rudder dry, now we're going to brush coat this other side. We're going to do it in the same manner as the rest of the pieces we've done. We'll just run an edge right along through there. And again, I'm going to take it in stages, just like we have been doing all along. You can't brush coat the whole thing or you'll get well behind schedule. So we're just going to brush across this, back to that second rib. And then this rib doesn't touch all the way to the back, so it doesn't give you a real good stopping point. But we're moving along fast enough that we can uh, we can stay ahead of it. So I'm gonna stop for a second. It's okay. Oh, I can't stop. Never mind. 
Yeah. That's free. Oh, okay, cool. Why don't you keep that? Yep, that'd be fine. Did you want all the receipts from your boat? Yep. Then we'll just run right around through here. Make sure nothing's running over the back edge. Get our leading edge cleaned up. Back, grab the next little section. Just, uh, I'm just stepping back just a little bit over that last rib just to get everything to smooth out real nice and neat. Kind of go back and check for hairs from the brush. Clean off the leading edge. Clean off our trailing edge. And then just head right on down the line. And this is just my way of doing it. There's uh, there's several methods to brush coating. I've, I've seen a lot of them done. I've done it several different ways. This is what I've come up with over the past 25 years or so. Uh, seems to be the best for me. makes for such a neat job you don't you don't see runs and lines in your paint when you're done it lays down and comes in real nice and smooth
and we're just going to finish this out the same way we did the rest of it. Right down to the bottom edge. We'll get some of our excess off of there. Smear that in a little more. And then we'll just go ahead and finish that straight back off of that leading edge of the rudder. just like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a little brush coat on the end right here. Because we have our little lap. So I'm just going to Lightly brush that and let that soak through. And this is actually joining these two layers of fabric together. And just finish that out just like that. We'll go ahead and clean that back edge, make sure it doesn't run around to the other side. One little line down through there. Right up through there. And that's actually sealed those two pieces of fabric together. It's not only sealed the fabric, it's glued them together. So now our lap from one side to the other actually goes both sides and they're, they're lapped together and locked in tight. And that has got, other than that little brush hair right there, one brush hair. We're still wet enough because we're supposed to catch that earlier than we just did. Let's go ahead and brush that right on in and look for any more. There's one more right there. And that looks awesome. That's got our rudder and our vertical stabilizer. They're brush coated and ready for the spray booth. And, um, the, the rest of the brush coating all goes the same on the vertical stabilizer. Uh, is the same as the horizontal stabilizers. The rudder brush is the same as the elevators. Um, your ailerons and flat brush in the same manner. and They'll be ready for the spray booth. And uh, that that pretty much closes out brush coating on this. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump over and um, brush coat the wings just as soon as Helen gets her tapes and stuff on the top of the wings, which is where we're gonna switch off to right now. <laughs>